so that was basically Rich's rig. Very easy to do and very, very effective. We were using that the other night, to be fair, um, on the mark we went to, and it was pulling the fish every, every time. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good rig. I mean, I, I go for the 150 wire on this sort of venue where I know realistically there aren't going to be any huge ones. Um, it's enough, and the, the 150 keeps a bit more, bit more supple. Um, obviously, if I know I'm going somewhere really grotty or if I'm fishing off the boat, obviously I'll upgrade that that wire to I use that off the boat as well so the 150 uh, from the 150 I'll uprate it to maybe 250 300 yeah. Um, yeah just just to get a bit of extra peace of mind you know the the pressures on the fish are different when you're fishing off the boat it's a lot more vertical so um, I just personally like to uprate the the wire a little so bit. so cost wise what, what's that cost to make to be honest um, I, I wouldn't know how much it costs I, I do them 50 at a time um, you know the so what's it cost you to do 50 with me? well I'd say probably maybe 15 20 quid i mean it's say, less than a say say 20 quid and he's it's getting, less than a quid a rig yeah so he's getting he's getting 20 quid and he's getting 50 rigs out of it so it's, it's yeah it's yeah. It's, it's, it's good value it's i mean 40 pence a, a rig really it's, yeah it, that's the way to be doing rough ground fishing yeah it's, very effective even if you wanted to have, add that to a pulley rig you can make a pulley rig up out of that couldn't you oh yeah quite yeah. easily and and to be fair i mean the the heat shrink uh, you know it's not very expensive it's it's not essential to the function of the rig i, I just find it i think it, it i think it tidies easier. it up and like you said it stops any entangles and different things yeah. and that little bit there helps to keep the rig out away from from your main line exactly yeah and stuff. it stiffens it's up, a nice little bit and like you said before the reason he's using these coxswain meat hooks are because he's had ever eight oh hook snap and i'll tell you what you won't be snapping that. Anybody what's not tried these hooks, I'll tell you what, that is one quality hook. One very quality hook. It's, um, it's a new design as well from what you've seen before. Yeah, it's to be honest, the one thing I found with Cox and Raw is, is they are constantly sort of updating, developing, listening to what anglers say. I, I had a long chat with uh, with Mark from Cox and Raw the other day um, about hooks. He's a bit of a hook anorak yeah. and so, so am I. You know, I've tried so many, certainly for the, for the rough ground fishing, but I mean, one thing to note is, is the points. I have had a lot of points bend over where you've been hung in. Yeah. I've, I've never had a point on one of those bend over as yet. I mean, you can see that you can see how sharp and of quality that is. I'm going to um, I'm going to basically make one of these up now and I'm going to put on a mackerel bait and slam it onto the DB2 and hopefully get an earwin on it tonight. Going to use big bait tonight, isn't it? Oh, so, big, know, just big muck baits. around. No mucking yeah. around tonight. Just put a couple of big baits out there and see what happens. The, obviously, I, I fish this venue quite a bit. Um, Richard, I think, fish this bar. Not this bit no, specifically, but I know the area. around from where we are. But we've had we've had some decent fish off here in the past. Um, this year, I've, I've seen fish up around the twenty pound mark. Um, and uh, hopefully we can get in on some of that action tonight, eh? Well, let's hope so, mate. I'll have you to thank if we land a big one down <laughs> I've never been I here before. I do want for him. I promised him a rain now <laughs> because uh, he, uh, he produced his business on the house the other night. But uh, we, uh, we're going to let Rich do a bait up on this one here now, uh, just to show you guys how, how he's baiting them up. And hopefully there's a few hints and tips from some of you lads what's having trouble with your rough ground fishing. And hopefully you can get out with this rig and the bait up he's about to show you and get into some, ho hopefully some big fish action. Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, show you how I bait up for an eel. Um, this isn't the biggest bait I'd ever put out, in truth. I, I do really like big baits, but there is a chance of a huss here, so we're, we're going to go slightly smaller than usual. So, take your mackerel, tail off. Now, head off. Just maybe half an inch, three quarters of an inch forward of the gill plate. Cut that right through. What you can see straight away, no different than you do for a sand eel with a sand eel off the uh, off the beaches for a ray. You're letting all that lovely juice and blood out of the fish. That really does make a difference. Somebody taught me that a long time ago, and it upped my catch rate straight away. We get a hook. What I do is I just pass it through, just nick it through the tail like so. Pull that clean through. Then I just nick it under the skin, push the hook down, pull it through like so. Hook point nice and exposed. We got a bait elastic. Start at near the bottom. Now this unfortunately is a frozen mackerel, I'd have preferred fresh, so they are a bit soft. Work your way up, 
Pay particular attention around the crimps and the eye of the hook. This stops it slipping. All the way up. And then we go right up near the tail end. You don't need to go up too far. It will sit where it is. Work our way back down. Snap off. Now, as you can see there, that hook point has got to be totally exposed. That will not now lie nice and streamlined. It won't spin up in the tide. Don't be afraid of big baits. You'll still catch the huss on, on a bait this size. In fact, I've taken more specimen huss on larger baits than I have smaller. They're, they're quite determined fish and they will take it. Um, and essentially just hit them quick. You'll miss the odd fish, it happens, but I've caught loads of big huss on that bait as well. You can also add some squid to this if you like. That's also popular with the huss. Um, you take a few eels on it as well. Um, and, and I use this technique for scad, uh, for garfish. I use big long chunks of garfish as well. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, obviously just to, to finish the rig off, is uh, how I fish my rotten bottom. Um, as we said before, uh, I like a running ledger. It means that the fish can take off freely. Uh, it won't feel any resistance when it gets to the uh, end of the limit of the pulley rig. Um, obviously safety is a big consideration. Sometimes we are still trying to put a bait at distance um, and I'm only using 20 pound line to uh, connect the lead. So what I use, I don't know if you can see this on the camera very well, is these little, um, little lead clips, I call them. They're just a, a little hook there that I attach to a swivel. They don't come with a swivel, I attach, attach one on. Tie the mono up onto the swivel, obviously to the lead, and then you simply just hook the lead onto the hook, like so, and the whole lot can get sent out. Um, obviously, as soon as it hits the water, that will release. Um, the swivel doesn't have to be particularly big. It's not there for any sort of strength, um, but that ensures you can safely cast that rotten bottom rig out uh, without risking losing your lead or doing anybody any damage. Um, the other thing I just wanted to show you as well was with what I was saying earlier, just a little sharpening stone. They cost about 99p. This is essential. It's probably one of the most essential pieces of kit I bring just for redressing the hooks. It doesn't matter how good quality your hooks are. We're fishing in horrible stuff here. Um, just redress the hooks after every throw and uh, ultimately that'll ensure that you're getting that fish um, every time that you get a bite. Now the venue we're fishing, we've had them up to the upper 20s um, and lost a lot bigger. I know the biggest I've known off this mark is 54 pounds, which is an absolute beast. So it's always in chance of, of pulling an eel out. I would say if we're going to get a decent one, we would see one around the 20s. Um, hopefully a 25 would be nice, but uh, any, anything really just to show a bend in this rod um, for the tackle test. So let's get him out there now. So I'm going to welling him out there now. As you, as you can see, he's got a big bait on him. Well, he's gone. Probably went out 50 yards, maybe. He's settled nice. Let's see if we can get an eel out on him now, eh? So we've been here around, uh, I don't know, an hour now, done a bit of filming, and um, the whole point of tonight is to target conger eel, as you, as you just saw with the cast. Bait's been out 20 minutes. Within uh, the first couple of minutes, it had, had a couple of knocks off left it, but the bites are developing. We've got a couple of runs, but I'm not sure if he's definitely on there yet. Normally you'll tell you because they'll try and take off. And, um, that's when I'll buckle up and uh, see what the rod's got. But what do you reckon, Rich? It looks quite it eely, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks pretty eely to me. It's those sort of little tentative, uh, gentle bites that uh, either mean something annoying's tickling you or a big eel's having a having a munch on it. So normally fine, just give him a bit of time and all will be revealed. Yeah, he's, he's knocking, mate. Oh, as we said, you can see the size of the baits. Eight o' works. It's a uh, it's a big old bait. But yeah, it's, it's looking rather reedy to me as well. These uh, new vast coats are absolutely stunning. You like this? I like it a lot, I'll mate. I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's nice because normally you've got, you got the smock on and sometimes it can be a bit too much where you yeah, want, yeah. You want, a, a you want something warm, but you, yeah. want, you want something that's going to just be like a light jacket. And to be fair, this is, this is ideal. You can, 
you can actually have it on over the top of your smock as well. Yeah, so you definitely. Can, you can actually wear it as a jacket, but it's, it's all winter lined and that. It, it, it's, it's a stunning bit of kit, to be fair. But um, just need to know if they make them in boat sail sizes to fit around me, and <laughs> They'll be alright, mate. <laughs> they, um, they are quite nice little, little features there with the uh, yellow uh, bass, but they're all like in, in a lined and that. Yeah, yeah. Quite warm, but yeah, it's nice, nice and light as well. They're ongoing your, range, yeah. They in are. your box and... What do you reckon? Oh, I don't know, mate. It's hard to say. Do you go for it or not? <laughs> I think you might He's have spat it, down, mate. Isn't he? I don't know. I find sometimes they'll do that to you, and then ten minutes later they'll take yeah, off. He's, he's, no, he's going for it. Still some, still some tickling you down there. Eh? For the DB2, six pound hus, which just took that big mackerel bait. I think he was on him as soon as he hit the water. To be fair, but. Uh, to be fair, the rod handled that pretty well. Fishing over the ledges onto rough ground and um, he started taking line, locked into the rod and lifted him up. And uh, to be, the, the bite detection on the rod was fantastic. And to be fair, there's a lot of power in the butt section and with the, with the tip section as well. I, to be fair, I know it's not an all round rough ground rod and um, it would handle taking big baits at range, no problem at all. I think, and uh, over this ground especially, it, it handled this fish fine. Whether it's going to handle a 20 pound deal or not is a different matter, but it, it, it produced this, this fish and uh, fingers crossed we can get a few more, but we're getting back now to fight another day. Straight off, there he goes. Well that one too bad was it? First, first cast, big bait, six pound hus. Not that conger after, so a few more bait ups now when we'll see if we can pull that big one out. Right then guys, another big bait up. Second cast about going out, see if we can fish. Another bait out at distance this time, a bit more distance and uh, hopefully get in amongst another fish. Turn my head like a little bit here. That one went out really well, really well. That one there is over the over the big ledge at the back now. So uh, fingers crossed we can get some noise in on him. I want that eel on this rod. We'll be happy. Even if we can get a 20 out, it'll be all right deal. Let's get him back up on the chamber now. So uh, into darkness we are. I'm fishing one rod tonight. I've got my other rods in uh, being rebuilt as we just said, so it's going to give me a lot of chance to uh, see what this rod's got. Up at Chesil the weekend, so we'll be fishing this one rod. Oh, we've got another bite. So hopefully it's an eel this time. That might be a little bit of tide to be fair. We're using six ounce bomb leads, but uh, we've got three rods out. Rich has got two rods out as well, and uh, we're hoping to see that eel. That'd be, that would make it tonight. Especially on this rod, all I want to see is a few fish out on the rod, so we can uh, get a, give it a, vet, uh, a fishing review more than anything. It's the biggest fish we've had out on it, six pound pass, handled that no problem at all. A lot of power in the buck section, it, it, um, it, I used it to be fair. A lot of rougher ground that you've got to bring up the fish up over, and um, I just kept the power on the tip and uh, let the rod do the work to be fair. Let's get that big eel. 